So in module 5.2, we derived the expression for safety margin, and we showed that for normally distributed uh, load and strength, the cumulative distribution function value corresponding to safety margin gives us the reliability. We worked through and derived that. What I'd like to do in module 5.3, is to work out a very detailed example of load strength interference. And the, this is the example that I'd like to work out. We have a tension bolt with a strength of 100,000 PSI, mean value, and a standard deviation of 10,000 PSI. Okay. So 10% of the mean value is the standard deviation for the strength of the bolt. And the load on the bolt, as I've shown in this picture here, the load is 5,000 is a mean value in pound force. Now these are different units now. This is in PSI, pounds per square inch. This is in pound force, 5,000 pound force. And with a standard deviation of uh, 500 pound force. Now, if you don't like pound force and PSI, you can turn this into um, Pascal's and Newton's, and it wouldn't change much in terms of how we go about solving the problem. So these are units that are customary in the US, so I've used them. So estimate the bolt radius R and the tolerance on R. So also specify the tolerance on R given that at most 50 bolts out of 10,000 can be replaced. So this is our reliability requirement, that no more than 50 bolts out of 10,000 can be replaced. Assume coefficient of variation of R in the range of 0.05 to 0.5. Okay, try the extreme values of coefficient of variation of R and a three sigma manufacturing capability. And I'll explain why this three sigma manufacturing capability is important. Okay, so we're given strength, we're given load. We don't know what the diameter of the bolt is or should be, or the standard deviation in on the diameter. Okay, instead we are given expected reliability, 50 bolts out of 10,000 are the max that can fail. We are allowed coefficient of variation of R in the range of 0.05 to 0.5 and a three sigma manufacturing capability. Okay. And I'll explain why this three sigma manufacturing capability. Okay, so let's uh, first uh, describe the situation we have. We have a variable R, which is my random variable, which is the radius of my bolt. And this R has some mean value but we don't know what the mean value is. This R has some standard deviation. I'm going to denote it as S sub R, and we don't know what that value is. We need to determine those values. Then we are told that we need also need to determine the tolerance interval. So this is my minus three sigma limit. and plus three sigma limit. Well, how do I know this is my minus three sigma limit and plus three sigma limit? We are told that assume a three sigma process. So once um, you have determined your mean value and standard deviation of the bolt radius, the tolerance limit would be, this will be R bar minus three times SR and this will be R bar plus three times SR. So those are my limits. So I need to find some acceptable SR, which meets my expectation, which meets uh, my coefficient of variation requirement or some load roughness requirement. And then I will know what the manufacturing tolerance I would need to specify would be. Those will be R bar minus three SR and R bar plus three SR. And if those are not acceptable, then I'll have to go back. So we need 
we have two equal two unknowns and the two unknowns are r bar and s sub r so therefore need two equations and two equations and the two equations we don't know what two equations to use which two equations to use first let's start with specified reliability and the specified reliability for us is no more than 50 bolts out of 10000 can fail that's our specified reliability and that is the reliability that we seek is 1 minus 50 over 10,000. That is the maximum. 50 over 10,000 is the failure that we can accept. Therefore, 1 minus 50 over 10,000 is the reliability that we seek. And that turns out to be 0 0.995. 0 0.995. Okay. Um, so now I can go ahead and estimate my safety margin. So what is my safety margin? So recall, reliability is the CDF corresponding to safety margin. So which means safety margin is the inverse CDF of reliability. Okay, and how would we find that? We can do that from the tables or we can use our new tool which is octave and do the calculation so i can go ahead and uh, load load that so now i can go back to the command that i used previously but that was for Okay, so now I have a value of 0.995, a mean value of zero, and a standard deviation of one. I do that. Okay. Okay, I had an extra parenthesis there. So let's do that. And that value turns out to be 0.2.57. 5, 8. That is my z value corresponding to um, a probability of 0.995. That's my z value with a. So now I can go back here and, and I know the safety margin, safety margin corresponding to inverse of point. 995 from octave is 2.578 okay so that gives me one relationship and that relationship is safety margin is the mean value of load minus the mean value mean value of strength minus the mean value of load divided by s sub y squared S sub L squared raised to the power one half. So this is one equation that I have. And I need a second equation. For the second equation, okay, normally one could use, one could specify load roughness, which we defined as S sub L divided by S sub Y squared plus S sub L squared to the power one half. We could specify load roughness. However, here we are given here, the value that we are given here is that S sub R over R bar, which is the coefficient of variation of R, is in the range, is in the range 0.05 to 0.5. Okay. So this becomes a little bit simpler. So this then directly says that S sub R is coefficient of variation of R times the mean value. So it gives a relationship between standard deviation and the mean value of the radius. 
So we can assume either a value of um, 0.05 for the coefficient of variation or 0.5 for coefficient of variation to see its effects. Okay, so this gives us the second equation that we need. So now we have reduced the number of unknowns from two to one because standard we can eliminate the standard deviation of the radius as an unknown because once I know the mean value, I can estimate the standard deviation. Alternatively, I can use load roughness. I would have to specify load roughness, but it turns out mathematically that's not as convenient. So either way, I need to have a relationship between standard deviation and the mean value. So now I'm ready to go through the problem. So I'm going to express this now. Um, so first I'm going to do this all uh, symbolically and then substitute the values. So now first thing I know is load is force divided by area. In this case, the load is stress corresponding to a given force. This is force divided by pi times r squared. So therefore, now I can find the mean value of load. The mean value of load is the expected value of force divided by pi r squared. That's equal to um, using the formula we learned in expectation and variance. So this is nothing but expected value of for, I will assume that P and R are independent. So this is 1 over pi expected value of P divided by expected value of R squared, assuming P and R to be independent, which is a reasonable assumption. Now we also know expected value of p is p bar. We also know expected value of r squared is by the formula we learned the mean value of r squared plus the standard deviation of r squared. And we know there is a relationship between mean value and standard deviation. So this is my load, okay, the mean value of load. Now next thing I need is the variance of load. The variance of load is S sub L squared. By definition, that's equal to variance of P divided by area. And that is by, again, given by the quotient formula that was there at the end of notes for expected value and variance. So this is P bar squared times S sub A squared plus A bar squared S sub P squared divided by A bar to the power 4, okay. So where A bar is the mean value of the area, which is mean value of pi times R squared which is equal to pi times expected value of r squared, which is pi times r bar squared plus s sub r squared. Okay, so and uh, variance of a is variance of pi times r squared. And if you recall, this will be variance of pi, it's pi squared times variance of r squared. And here we will use the formula that we saw before. So pi squared, variance of r squared is pi squared times expected value of r to the power four minus expected value of r squared to whole squared. This is all there in the handout on uh, during the in the normal distribution module on variance of x to the power n, there is a handout and it's all there in that. So these formula are there in that handout. So this is pi squared and now I can write this as r bar to the power 4 plus 6 
r bar squared s sub r squared plus 3 s sub r to the power 4 minus s sigma minus r bar squared s sub r squared the whole squared <coughs> so this corresponds to this term this corresponds to this term and you simplify all that and that turns out to be pi squared times 4 times r bar squared s sub r squared plus 2 times s sub r to the power 4. And remember this formula is only valid for normal distribution only. So this is not a general expression. Remember this in order to derive this, we needed to assume symmetry, we needed to exploit the symmetry of the normal distribution. So now we can go ahead, use these expressions, but we don't quite know S sub r. So instead we will use S sub r as using the coefficient of variation formula. So now we can go ahead and substitute all of this. And so now we can use this in safety margin. Safety margin is defined as the mean value of strength minus the mean value of load divided by variance of strength plus variance of load raised to the power one half. And so now I can write this as mean value of st strength. And normally you should always substitute numerical values only towards the end of any solution process. Okay, leave it in symbolic S sub y squared plus P bar squared S sub a squared plus a bar squared sigma sub S sub p squared divided by a bar to the power 4 this whole thing raised to the power one half. And using expressions for S sub A and A bar, we can write this as Y bar minus P bar divided by pi R bar squared S sub R squared divided by standard deviation of strength squared plus pi squared p bar squared into multiplied by 4 times r bar to the power 4 s sub r squared plus 2 s sub r to the power 4 plus pi squared r bar squared plus s sub r squared this whole squared to s sub p squared and this whole thing divided by pi to the power 4 r bar squared, s sub r squared raised to the power 4, this whole thing raised to the power 1 half. Okay, now we are ready to substitute values here. And we can now look, uh, look at the cases. So this SM value, remember this SM value is 2.578. And so recall, so, so substitute SM is 2.578. The mean value of strength is 100,000 PSI and standard deviation of strength is 10,000 
PSI, we know those values, and P bar is 5,000 pound force, and sigma SP, not sigma, S, SP is 500 pound force, and we also know R bar R S sub R is going to be some coefficient of variation of R times R bar and coefficient of variation of R is in the range 0.05 to 0.5 that's the range of coefficient of variation of r. So substitute all of this and let's consider the first case. The first case is uh, coefficient of variation of r is equal to 0 0.05 and I solved this. If you substitute that, you get now a nonlinear equation and that nonlinear equation turns out to be that um, that safety margin, um, if, you, if you substitute this, the safety margin turns out to be um, an equation of this form, 100,000 minus 5,000 divided by pi times r squared plus s sub r squared divided by uh, 10,000 squared plus um, 500 squared r bar to the power 4 plus 402 r bar squared times S sub R squared plus 201 S sub R to the power 4 divided by pi squared R bar squared plus S sub R squared whole raised to the power 4. And if you substitute and now you get a fairly Nonlinear equation, very nonlinear equation, and you need some solver to solve this. I solve this using Mathematica because it's a highly nonlinear equation when you substitute for CVR equals 0.05. Um, so maybe I should uh, write this here. So this is valid regardless of the CV value. So first case. CVR equals 0 0.05 and then that gives me an R solution, it gives me two solutions actually. One of them turns out to be negative which I know is not valid. So 1.156 inches. So that's my solution when CVR is 0 0.05. And the second situation is when uh, coefficient of variation is 0.5 times is 0.5. This gives me an R value of 0.207 inches. So the message of this example is that if your variability in R is greater Okay, CV being greater means that you know, my standard deviation is greater for a given mean value. Then in order to, this is mean value, right? So in order to compensate for potential uncertainty in my radius, I would need to increase the mean value. I need to make my part larger to account for the uncertainty in my radius value. So CVR, larger CVR also implies 
larger load roughness. So essentially these two have same implications. So if I have larger load roughness, I have more uncertainty in my load environment and therefore I need to make my mean value larger, which is what we have done. When the CVR is larger, the mean, mean value is larger compared to a smaller coefficient of variation for the radius. Um, the other important message of probabilistic design, this is a probabilistic design. So we know that this radius that we have solved for under the given coefficient of variation will yield a reliability of 99.995 or 99.5 percent or 50 bolts out of 10,000 to fail. So we know that is the case. We know this will yield that. But in the process, we need to have, we need to be able to solve this nonlinear equation. So unlike in, uh, in, uh, in traditional design also, you have nonlinear equations, but this will be a little bit more nonlinear in terms of the nature of the equation, a little bit more nonlinear compared to traditional design. So you would need to solve for the nonlinear equations, but this assures our required reliability. Okay, with this example, I will conclude module 5.3. Thank you.